This is something that I have definitely never seen before. Not only is there a dime on the end of this roll, but it feels like this is an entire roll of dimes. I can feel right here, there's a coin that's definitely not a penny. Who knows what could be in this roll? Hello everybody and welcome back to Coin Shortage Hunting. Now I know what some of you are thinking, Quinn, isn't the coin shortage over? I thought that ended like months ago. Well, unfortunately, no. It looks like the coin shortage is making a return. But as you can see, that's not gonna stop us from doing some coin roll hunting. I'm still able to get 10 rolls of each denomination, pennies, nickels, quarters, and dimes, and I'm super excited to get into these and see what we can find. There is some seriously crazy stuff going on with this particular batch of coins, especially in the pennies, so without any further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at these rolls. Starting off with the pennies, this is something that I have definitely never seen before. Take a look at this. Not only is there a dime on the end of this roll, but it feels like this is an entire roll of dimes all jammed into a penny roll, which I paid 50 cents for. There's likely five bucks in dimes in there and maybe even some silver ones as well. I'm feeling all the way around this roll and it is completely uniform, no bumps, which means I think this is full of dimes. Up next, we have a really nice ender. If I go ahead and peel this end back right here, you'll see that we actually have a really nice wheat penny ender right there staring us back in the face. I am very excited to get into that one. You can see it still has some luster left. This is a very old coin and a good sign for these rolls. And then finally right here, we can see a very strange looking roll. It's got some weird ends to it. It has a little bit of a bend right here and I can feel right here, there's a coin that's definitely not a penny. It could be a foreign coin, could be a nickel. And uh, I'm just excited to see what it is, especially considering that we have a full roll of dimes right here. Who knows what could be in this roll? Now the other seven rolls are normal as far as I can tell, but considering what we have already in these three rolls, there could be anything in these rolls right here. And I'm very excited to get into them and see what we can find. Moving on to the nickel rolls, we have a couple of nice enders right here. I don't know if they're gonna be anything, but you can see right there, that one definitely looks old. And if you look at this one right here, we have basically the same thing going on. A really nice old looking coin right there. We're looking for anything pre-60s and uh, we'll be pulling those out if they are. So hopefully we get some old ones there and then some more in the rest of the rolls. Taking a look at our quarter rolls for today, you can see they are all bank wrapped. So we're not gonna have any customer wrapped weirdness like we had with those dimes and the penny rolls earlier. But we do have a couple of nice enders right here. They're both bicentennial quarters. These aren't particularly rare, but I do like to pull them out because I do find them cool. And finally, we have our dime rolls for today's video, eight of them being custom wrapped, two of them machine wrapped. I didn't see any enders here, but uh, hopefully we can find some silver, maybe some foreign coins out of these today. Now guys, throughout today's video, I'm gonna be using these Quinn's Coins coin roll hunting placemats as a guide as I go through my penny, nickel, quarter, and dime rolls. If you're just getting started coin roll hunting, these are a great tool to guide you through what you should be looking for for each denomination, as well as picking up the coins and transporting them to your dump box. Once again, if you're interested in getting one or more for yourself, you can pick them up at quinscoins.com and I'll be putting links down in the description below. Now, without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump into some coin rolls. We are of course gonna be starting this hunt with those three awesome penny rolls on the right end. So I will slide those out and let's take a look at this first one. Of course, we have to look at this roll, which I presume to be completely full of dimes. So let's take a look at this end because we didn't look over here yet. But like I said, it does feel completely uniform, meaning that there's no bumps, there's no other size coins. So what you see in the end is a dime, and it feels like there's dimes throughout the entire thing. Once again, I only paid 50 cents for this roll because that's how much a penny roll is worth. Of course, there's probably gonna be a lot more than 50 cents in here worth of dimes. So let's go ahead and dump it out and uh, see what we're gonna get. All right, so look at that, guys, right off the bat full of dimes. Now, what I actually want to check for now, since I know that this is probably going to be all dimes, is if any of them are actually going to be silver dimes. So one way to check for those, I guess I should probably have my uh, silver stacking coin roll hunting placemat out for this one, because this is full of dimes, and uh, we're going to want to see if we can find any silvery edges. Basically, we're looking for an edge that looks completely gray. You can see most of these dimes just have uh, sort of like a gray and then a red to it. Basically, that is going to be a clad dime. So I don't see any silver in here, but look at this, guys. I'm gonna have to count this up and see if this is actually $5 of dimes or not. All right, guys, so I just went through and counted up all the dimes in that roll. You can see right here, we actually do have 10 stacks of five. So each one of these stacks is worth 50 cents. That is a 10X on our investment on that single penny roll. I don't think I've ever done that well on corn roll hunting before. We actually do have a couple of dimes right here that were very close to being silver, just one year off. These are 1965s. We need 1964 or older to be a silver dime, but still that is an awesome, 
Awesome return on investment right there. All right, so moving on now to our second roll. Let's take a look at this one right here. This one is the one with the really nice wheat penny ender. Let's just take one more look at that. You can see it actually still has some of its luster still remaining on the coin. I'm very excited to see what the year is gonna be on this one. So let's go ahead and uh, tear this roll open just a little bit. Maybe there'll even be some more uh, nice older coins in the roll, who knows. But uh, there it is right there. And uh, oh, don't want it to slide off there. I see that we don't have a wheat penny underneath, so this isn't gonna be a full roll of wheats, but uh, still we do have a nice wheat penny ender right there. Looks like we got a 2004 underneath it. So we'll take a look at the rest of those coins in just a minute here, but I first wanna just flip this over and see what we're gonna get for a year on this really nice looking wheat penny, guys. Here we go, three, two, one. All right, look at that, 1955 Denver. Too bad it wasn't the 1955 Philadelphia because then we could have looked for a double die, which, my gosh, double die, I should say, with a, with a D on the end there. That would have been worth a pretty penny for sure. Here's a nice close-up of the coin we just pulled out. Some really nice luster on that. I suspected it was probably going to be from the 50s because you very rarely find a wheat penny looking this nice from the 40s or earlier. But still, a really great find right there. And let's see what else we're going to find in the roll. So we'll just zoom out here a bit and dump out the rest of it and see if we're gonna get any more wheat pennies, anything else interesting. I don't see any more dimes in this roll, so looks like we just have uh, pennies this time, but uh, let's see if we can get anything else here, guys. So, so far, just seeing basically what looks like normal pennies. I'm not seeing any wheat ears, no uh, Indian heads or anything like that. It would, would be really cool if we could find one of those. There we go, we just got a Canadian right there. Let's see what we have for a year on that one. It looks like it's gonna be 1981. And that is indeed a copper coin, so we will keep it. I keep all the Canadians uh, because, you know, they, they actually um, don't make them anymore, which is kind of interesting. Over in Canada, they decided to stop making the penny, but we still make them here in the United States. So, guys, that is going to be it for that roll. Just the one really nice find, that uh, nice shiny 50s wheat penny right there. Now, for this roll right here, I am super interested to see... What is making it bend like that? How, I, I mean, do you guys ever find a roll of coins that has that weird of a bend in it and then this weird lump right here? Let's just open it from this end and uh, see what that lump is gonna be first of all. So what do we have for an ender is probably the first question we want to answer. It looks like it's gonna be a 1970s coin, 79 on that one. And uh, let's just peel this back and see what is gonna be underneath. So there is the source of that lumpiness, and it looks like it is going to be an American nickel. So let's uh, let's pull that one out and see what we're gonna get. Look at that, 1990. It almost looks like it's been in the ground. I don't know why somebody would shove a nickel into a penny roll and then continue to put more pennies on top of it. Maybe they were short on this roll and they felt like they needed to put a nickel in there because they didn't have enough pennies. I don't know, but uh, you can see this one's got some, some damage to it for sure, some nastiness up there on the right-hand side. But uh, anyways, that blockage is out. Let's see if there was any, uh, any cause to this weirdness that we were having in the middle of the roll. So right about here, I, was, I had some weird, uh, like a weird crease to it. Let's see if there's gonna be anything there. So, so far I'm not really seeing anything, but uh, maybe if we peel back some of these coins, let's see if any of them are gonna be old. Mm, no, I don't think so, guys. It looks like this may just be a regular roll. So let's dump it out and uh, see what else we have in there, other than, of course, that crazy craziness with the nickel uh, at the beginning there. All right, so let's take a look here. I am seeing some older-looking coppers. There's a 77 on that end, a 76 right there, but uh, I'm not seeing any wheat ears yet. Let's just keep on uh, moving through the roll, see if anything pops out at us. And uh, if we don't find anything here, I'll probably go ahead and do the next one uh, off-camera and uh, we'll see what we can come up with. We got seven more rolls to go, and uh, I think that is going to be it for that one. So actually, what the heck, let's go ahead and open this uh, machine wrapped roll because you can see right here, we have a few, uh, well actually mostly customer wrapped rolls and then a single machine wrapped roll. So I'm interested to see uh, what's gonna be in this machine wrapped roll versus the customer wrapped rolls that we just opened up. So let's go ahead and open this one up. They do open up a lot nicer on camera, that's for sure. And we'll go ahead and pour it out and see what we're gonna get. And then if there's nothing here, we'll go ahead and just move the rest of this off camera. All right, so right off the bat, I'm seeing a Canadian coin right there. Let's flip this one over to see what the date is gonna be. 1984, all right. Guys, leave me a comment down below if you guys are getting Canadian coins in your rolls as well. Of course, me being in Michigan, I get quite a few of them. 
And uh, I'm definitely not complaining. I, I like to see him pop out every once in a while. But all right, I think that's gonna be it for that roll. I'm not seeing anything else other than a nice shiny 2020 coin right there. But yeah, guys, we'll go ahead and move on to the next roll. And actually right there, it looks like we had a find right at the end. I had to flip that because I thought it was a 2009 and it looks like I was right. This is one of the 2009s. You can see these are displayed on the placemats right here. And uh, these are definitely coins that you want to be on the lookout for. They are uh, a little bit less common than your typical penny around this era. Uh, 2009 actually had a, a bit of a scarcity in all coinage. So uh, the 2009 anything is, is going to be uh, something you want to look out for. But uh, I'd like to see a 2009 penny come out. It's been a while since I've seen that. Anyways, guys, we'll go ahead and get on to the next one, and I'll let you know what I'm finding. All right, guys, so it took us a few rolls, but I think we finally have another find. If you'll take a look right over here, you can see that that is not a penny. And it looks like it's going to be a familiar coin to what we were seeing earlier, if you take a look at this. Look at that. We just got another dime in a penny roll. Now, I can't really tell from that edge what this is going to be. That could potentially be silver because it just looks gray to me. So we'll go ahead and flip this over and see what we get for the year on it. Three, two, and one. No, unfortunately not. 1999 is pretty far away from being silver. But uh, hey, I'll take an extra nine cents on the roll. That is a nice sign to see. So, so far we've gotten an entire roll of dimes, one roll with a nickel in it, and then one with an extra dime in it. We just have two more rolls to go and uh, I'll just go ahead and take a look at the rest of these coins to see if we're going to get any uh, interesting pennies here. Haven't found a single uh, additional wheat cent. Haven't found any 2009s since that very first one that we pulled out. Uh, but I am hopeful that we can get some more here. So I think that's going to be it for that roll though, guys. We'll go ahead and move on to the next one and I'll let you know if I find anything good. So second to last roll looks like it's going to actually have quite a few finds for us here. If you take a look right here, it looks like we have a no-date Canadian... I'm just kidding. The date is actually on the other side. I believe this is going to be a 1992. Oh, nope, I was wrong. 2002 is the year on that one. And that, of course, is Queen Elizabeth right there. So we have quite a few uh, Canadian coins coming out of this one. I'm happy to see that. We also have another 2009 uh, coming out of this roll. So there we go, another one of the series. We actually got the first one earlier, which was this log cabin. Um, I think that's the birth and early childhood. And then this one right here is going to be where all these coins are. This one is called Formative Years. So there we go. We are two for four on that series so far. Uh, we got a 59 right there, which, you know, that, that might have a, a wheat back on it. Let's just go ahead and see. Uh, nope, unfortunately it doesn't. Most of these, actually all of them, are going to have uh, the memorial on the reverse side. Um, but yeah, let's see what else we got here. I saw another Canadian right there. Let's see what we're going to have for a year on that one. Ooh, that's nice and uh, nice and shiny. Got a little bit of a green tint to it, and that's in 1998. And then I think we actually have a wheat penny coming out right here. This one is 1957. A little bit newer than the first one that we found and definitely in much worse shape. But I will take it. A wheat penny is a wheat penny. So, guys, we have just one more roll to go through. Why don't we go ahead and just do it uh, live on camera here. So we'll just open it from this end because it is much easier to uh, rip into these ends. These are actually really nice rolls, the, the ones that uh, come standing like this. Uh, I just like to rip into them, though, because it's a lot easier to uh, get, a, get all the coins out on camera in a, sort of a, a, a nice way to view for you guys, um, because I'm not going to be using these rolls, any, reusing them anyway. I'm just going to be bringing all the coins back to the bank. But yeah, let's go ahead and get through uh, this roll right here to see if we're going to find anything. Now, these are all stuck together. What What's, uh, what's going on with that? <laughs> Uh, this is why we wear gloves, folks. Who knows what could be sticking these coins together. But I do want to get them apart so I can see what we have. It's really sticky. That's strange. So it looks like it's going to be... What is that? Yep, it's sticking to my glove as well. 1979. Okay, just wanted to make sure it wasn't a wheat penny that we could be missing out on. Sandwiched between a couple of uh, memorials there. And this is another one. I can't even... Can hardly make that out, but that is looking like it's going to be a shield scent which puts it uh, no older than 2010. All right, guys, I think that is going to do it for the pennies. So we will go ahead and now move on to the nickels. And for that, we're gonna be grabbing our nickel tray as well as our nickel placemat. So we'll go ahead and jump into those first two rolls. Those are the ones that had uh, some older looking enders. Let's see, is it gonna be this end? I don't remember. We'll have to check. Nope, that's the newer end. 
Let's take a look at this one right here. This is the older looking end. That is definitely an older looking coin. Let's see if we can get a mint mark off of that. Zoom in there a little bit. So if there was a mint mark, it would be on the right hand side of the Monticello there. I do not see one though. So I think this is just gonna be a Philadelphia and uh, we'll see what it's gonna be. So there it is right there. Let's pull it out and we'll give it a flip and see what we have here in three, two, one. Very nice guys, 1940. That's about as old as a Jefferson nickel can be. They started in 1938. So that is an awesome find right off the bat. And uh, what the heck, let's go ahead and take a look at the other ender uh, as well to see if we can get one there. Now this one I'm not as sure about. Let's see if it has a mint mark. It does have a mint mark. It's a Denver mint mark right there. That puts it at least as old as 1964. But if it is a 1960s, I won't be keeping it. So let's go ahead and reveal this one as well. Man, that one underneath it kind of looks old too. We'll have to put a pin in that and come back to it. So here we go. Let's see what we have here. Three, two, one. Ah, oh, that's just a 1964. All right, that's okay. That other one underneath it looks like it's gonna be a 1970s, so that's not gonna be uh, anything interesting for us. But we will take a look at the rest of these. So starting off with the first roll, let's dump them all out and see what we can get. Now, would it be really awesome to find a buffalo nickel? It's been a long time since I've found one. Uh, and I would love to see one come out for us today. But uh, yeah, I guess you just never know. It's, it's pretty obvious though when they do come out, they look quite a, quite a bit different than uh, Jefferson Nickel, which makes me wonder why people keep putting them back into circulation. I guess people just don't, uh, don't really know what they're putting back into circulation a lot of times. Of course, also keeping an eye out for 2009s. If you guys see any that I miss, please do let me know down in the comments. Uh, I don't see any in that roll so far. I will go back and check them though, just to make sure uh, off camera. So let's go ahead and get into the second roll now. Let's just dump them out real quickly here and see what we are gonna get. All right, so I see one right here that's, that's definitely looking old. And actually look at that guys, the second coin in might have just barely been off camera. It's a 1941. So let's go ahead and flip this one over and see what we get for a mint mark. And it's just going to be Philadelphia. There's definitely some damage on that coin as well. That is a nice older coin. We are having some really nice yields off of these rolls already. That other older one right there is looking like it's just gonna be a 65. So that one's gonna be thrown back. And we'll flip these over to see if we got any 2009s. And just kind of briefly go through these to see if anything old pops out. Once again, I will be going back through them to make sure I didn't miss any 2009s at all. That right there looks pretty old. It looks like it's just gonna be a 63 though. And let's see what else we can get here at the end. It looks like that's gonna be it guys. So we got eight more rolls to go. I'll let you know when I find something good. All right guys, take a look at this. I just opened this roll and I am seeing something already. Take a look. That date right there, it looks familiar and it also looks very old. So let's take a look at this. We got one of these right off the bat uh, when we started looking at these nickels, 1940. Let's flip it over and see if we have a mint mark on this one. Three, two, and one. Nope, no mint mark, so it's another 1940 Philadelphia. I will add it to the other one we have. We actually only have two more rolls to go at this point, so uh, the nickels have not really been treating us too well so far. I really didn't get a whole lot out of those last few rolls that I looked through. And uh, let's see if this one's gonna produce any more for us other than that 1940. I'm not really seeing any older looking coins, so I'm probably gonna say no on that one. All right, I just double checked to make sure there weren't any 2009s. I didn't see any, so we'll go ahead and dump these coins. And then we will move on to quarters, which is gonna be our silver stacking placemat. And uh, I'm always excited to use this one. This is my newest placemat. Looks like I spilled a couple there. Got to make sure that we get them all in the dump box. So there we go. We got our silver stacking placemat. We have our rolls of quarters. We're going to get started with those bicentennial enders. So let's take a look here. What, what side are those on? They are right over here. All right, guys. So obviously we're going to be looking for silver in the quarters. That's mainly what people look for. There's also a lot of other good things to look for, like 2010, 2011. Those are pretty rare. 2009 is also rare. But uh, in the quarters, it's actually the 2010, 2011s that are uh, more rare as far as the um, more modern coins go. So of course, anything 1964 or older is gonna be silver. You'll be able to identify that 
uh, by the edge of the coin, just like we were able to do with those dimes earlier. I don't see any silver here, but uh, I do know that we have our bicentennial ender over there, so I'm gonna grab that one, just so you guys can take a look at that in case you are unfamiliar with the coin. So you can see this is the bicentennial 1776-1976 coin. And uh, most of these are in pretty bad shape because they have been in circulation for a long time. But like I said, I do like to pull them out. I like to collect them just because I think they're cool. And it uh, goes back to my childhood as well. That's something that I used to do as a kid quite a bit. So let's take a look just real briefly at some of these quarters to see if we're going to get any of the uh, 2009, 2010, anything in that era. Also want to be on the lookout for the West Point quarters. So those are 2019 and 2020. All this information is on the placemats, by the way. If you find a W mint mark right there where we see the D mint mark, that is a actually pretty valuable coin. I think they sell for anywhere from 10 to 20 bucks. Uh, on eBay. So that is something that you definitely want to be looking out for. I think that they're getting more and more difficult to find as uh, people are pulling them out of circulation. There's another 2020 right there. We have a chance for a W. Uh, it's just going to be a Philadelphia that time though. They are very difficult to find so it's uh, it's not likely when you flip it over that it's going to be a, a West Point but uh, sometimes it happens. There's another one right, right there. We got a 2020 that we can check for the W. Nope, not that time. And I think that's going to be the end of that roll. So let's go ahead and open one more because we do have another one with a bicentennial ender. And uh, we can take a look at that one as well. So let's see if we're going to get any silver out of this, if this bicentennial can bring us some, uh, some luck here. And uh, sometimes you get a silvery looking edge and it actually ends up being a Canadian, which uh, can be, uh, you know, a little bit frustrating, uh, except that you also have a chance to find Canadian silver, so you got to keep that in mind as well. I'm not seeing uh, any silvery edges. I do like to pull out these newer looking edges though because that's going to be the most likely chance that you have a 2019 or 2020, which it looks like we do have right here, 2019. We'll check this one for the West Point. Nope, not going to be at that time. And I don't see anything else there, so we'll go ahead and dump them out and uh, we'll take a look at these together. All right, so that's a 2017. We are looking for 2010s, 2011s. Uh, there's a 2020 right there, which we can check. It's gonna be Denver. Let's see what else we can find here. There's a 2020 right there. That one's just gonna be a Philadelphia. That's a 2020, but I already see that it's a Denver. And let's just keep on moving through these quarters. Look at that, man. That is a really nice looking bicentennial. So that is two on the roll, because we had one uh, as an ender there. Yeah, that's a nice looking coin right there. I like that one a lot. So I'll be putting that one to the side for sure. And uh, we'll keep trucking here, see what else we can get. Let me know down in the comments below what your favorite design is. Uh, there's been tons of quarters designs over the last 20 or so years. And uh, these 2020s are, I don't know, I, I, I like some of them. I definitely like the bat one for the American Samoas. That one's a really cool one. I think that was the first W I found as well. There's a, a 2019 right there. And no W though. And look at that guys, I don't even, was that on the end? Maybe I, how did I do this? Cause I only have two bicentennials over here. So this must've been the ender right here. Yeah, cause I didn't, I didn't take a look at that. So that's why we are seeing that bicentennial ender come out uh, at the end there. All right guys, so that is two quarter rolls down. We got eight more to go. I'll let you know what I'm finding and uh, if we can pull any silver out. All right guys, I'm about halfway through the rolls and check this out. I actually just got my first 2021 quarter and uh, this is a pretty cool one. This is the only, they actually only made two designs in 2021, the Tuskegee Airmen and then there was Washington Qu Crossing the Delaware, which I haven't seen any of yet. Uh, unfortunately, they didn't make any West Point. Uh, they didn't make any of these in West Point, so you won't see the W on the 2021s. But uh, it is cool to see my first 2021 right there. I think that's a definitely a cool design, uh, obviously for historical value as well. Uh, I do also have a whole bunch of 2019s and 2020s here that I wanted to check for Ws. This is one that was right next to that uh, 2021 we just pulled out. So we'll go ahead and check those real quick uh, while I have the camera on. Just flipping them over real fast. We have a nice uh, nice array of different designs here for 2020 and 2019. And uh, I haven't seen any W's come out yet, unfortunately. And the last one, Lowell, that's gonna be a 
Philadelphia. Okay, so that's gonna do it for that roll. Let's go ahead and dump those over there. We actually have five bicentennials in five rolls so far, and we got five more to go. Just halfway through, let's see if we can get some silver. All right, guys, we are now down to our last roll. I have a couple of finds that I'm gonna show you after we jump into this one. Nothing too special, but uh, definitely some good stuff and possibly some Ws. I have a whole stack of 2019s and 2020s that we need to check. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and jump into this last roll here. I'm seeing some nice shiners, especially over here on the right side. These two right next to each other look like they could be some newer coins. Oh, lost that one. Uh, but I already saw the mint marks. It doesn't look like either one of those are gonna be a W. That one doesn't even have a chance being a 2015. But all right, let's just uh, go through these ones right here, see if we can get anything interesting out. Look at that, we just got another bicentennial. Like I was telling you guys, these are not rare by any uh, way, shape, or form, but uh, I do like them, so I, I like to pull them out. There's a 2013 right there. I, I don't think this one's super difficult to find, Fort, uh, Fort McHenry there. But um, like I said, 2013, 2011, it's mostly 2011 and 2012, uh, and 2010 actually that are difficult to find. 2013s, it's it's not as uh, as bad. But look at this, we got a couple of 2020s right next to each other. And uh, this is actually one that I very rarely see for some reason. The Tallgrass Prairie just hasn't made it my way. Um, so would love to find a W in that. There is another 2021 right there. So it looks like we are gonna start seeing those all over the place. Um, and then we got, uh, oh, that's 2017. I thought it was 2010 for a second. We got a uh, American Samoa right here, National Parks. That one's not gonna be a W though. And what else can we get? There's another 2021 right there. And I think that's about it for that roll. So let's go ahead and take a look at our stack of 2019, 2020s. Here's another tall grass prairie that, like I said, I don't get very many of these at all. So always like to see them come out. So we're just looking for Ws now because those are worth quite a bit more than your regular quarter. So I guess maybe what I should do is just do it this way because then we can just kind of go through and see if there's a W or not. So that's Philadelphia, 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 Philadelphia. <laughs> As you can see, I'm uh, over on the east side rather than the west side. Wow, every single one of those is Philadelphia. Okay, so let's see what else we got. We got a couple more bicentennials, which brings our total up to, it looks like eight bicentennials out of 10 rolls. That's pretty crazy. Uh, we did get a 2012, this one's Shaco Culture. Um, not the rarest 2012. We also got a 2009 District of Columbia, which is definitely cool to see. And then we got a couple of toned coins over here. I actually thought that this one was maybe plated in something to give it like this gold plated uh, look to it. The uh, edge of it is, is even a little bit gold. And then this one right here looks like it just has some crazy artificial toning going on. I saw that edge and I was like, what even is this? You can see it's got quite a bit of toning on uh, the obverse as well. But that is going to be it for the quarters, guys. I'm gonna dump these and we will go ahead and get into the dimes. So guys, as you can see, the dimes I'm actually gonna be using the same placemat for because this is our silver stacking placemat. It has dimes, quarters, and half dollars. I think I'll flip it over to the other side though for this hunt. So you can see I actually have a little graphic here which shows you what all the different types of edges look like. Pretty much all we've been seeing today is uh, clad in both the quarters and the dimes because we had, uh, weirdly enough, an entire uh, penny roll full of dimes. But like I said, guys, I didn't see anything too interesting uh, in the dimes, so I think what I'm gonna do is just open one customer wrapped roll and then one machine wrapped roll to start us off and see if that's gonna have anything for us. We'll start with the uh, machine wrapped roll because they are quite a bit easier to open up and uh, quickly check for silver edges. And uh, so we'll go ahead and do that now. So let's open her up and see if we can see any silver. Mm, I'm seeing mostly clad here, guys. A couple of newer ones, nice shiny ones right there in the center. There's really not a whole lot to look for in dimes though, as far as I'm concerned. I'm not really a big air or variety type guy, so I don't really look for that stuff. But let's see what these newer looking ones are anyway. These are probably gonna be like 2021 or something. So that, that one's 2018 and that one is 2015, okay. So I don't think that's gonna have a whole lot for us. Of course, we will be on the lookout for 2009, but uh, that's not something that is very interesting to watch. I'm just gonna have to check every single date. This one is definitely beat up. It looks like it's been in a dryer or something to make it super small like that. But yeah, that's, uh, it looks like it's gonna be it for the uh, that machine wrapped roll. I'm gonna go ahead and jump into this uh, customer wrapped roll. Maybe we'll have some better luck here. 
Uh, but so far, I'm not seeing much. It would be kind of funny if we were if we got a dime roll full of pennies to balance things out. But uh, I don't think if you tried to stuff a bunch of pennies in a dime roll, that probably wouldn't work out too well for you. So the thing about these customer raft rolls, it's a little bit difficult to dump them out and try to show them to you. I'm not seeing any silver there though, so I think we're just gonna go ahead and dump the rest of this out. I will take a look at these for you guys and let you know if we get anything good. All right guys, so those first two rolls didn't have anything in them, but you can see right here, we have some interesting looking coins right there. They do have that silvery look, but you know, sort of just looking at it at first glance, but if you look a little closer, it's definitely not a silvery look. And as a matter of fact, it looks more like that right there, uh, especially the ridges. I don't know how to describe it, but there is definitely a difference between an American silver and just a regular Canadian. Two right next to each other though, so that's kind of interesting. I think these are probably gonna be Canadian. I'm about 99.9% .9 sure, but let's just pull them out just in case. So here we go, we got our first, that's definitely Canadian, and that is as well. A couple of newer Canadians uh, at that, so. Let's take a closer look at these coins. This one is a 2010, and underneath it we have a 2007. So that is two Canadian coins right there. Sort of looked like silver, but not really. Uh, if Once they get a little bit older, it becomes a little bit more difficult to tell if you have a Canadian or a silver. But uh, I do like finding them. It, it sort of switches things up, especially with dimes, which pretty much all look the same to me. But guys, anyways, I will go ahead and go through the rest of these and I'll let you know the next roll that I find something interesting. So as usual, it's looking like the dimes are probably gonna be a bust. We are on our last roll right now. Haven't found any silver, haven't found any 2009s yet, but we still have one more chance here. So let's unroll it. I saved this uh, machine wrapped roll for last so we could take a look at it because it's much easier to show uh, the edges on camera to see if we have any silver. Mm, no, I don't think we do, unfortunately. So we'll just dump those out and check for 2009s and I will get back to you in just a minute. Unfortunately, no 2009s, so that makes the dimes a total bust, except for a couple Canadians, which we had come out in, I think, roll number three. So those are our finds in the dimes today. Guys, let's go ahead and take a look and see what we were able to get out of all the rolls combined. So guys, here is our haul for today's coin shortage hunt. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that pennies definitely won. We got $5.10 in dimes right there, plus a nickel, a couple of nice wheat pennies, and a couple of 2009s. That was really awesome to see out of just 10 penny rolls. And then as far as nickels go, we got a couple of older ones. Uh, two 1940s and a 1941, all from the Philadelphia Mint. For quarters, we got eight Bicentennials, our first 2020 Tuskegee Airmen quarter, a 2012 Shaco Culture, 2009 District of Columbia, and a couple of toned coins over here on the end. And then in the dimes, we got a couple of Canadian dimes, which both came out right next to each other in the same roll. All in all, I'd say that was a pretty successful hunt. Having an extra $4.65 out of the penny rolls is basically just as good as getting a silver quarter, if you think about it. Guys, let me know down in the comments below what coin is your favorite to hunt between pennies, dimes, nickels, and quarters. I think definitely today my favorite was pennies, but overall, I really like to do nickels, and I'm hoping that we can get something older in the next round. Once again, if you're interested in picking up one of these coin roll hunting placemats to aid you in your own coin roll hunting, make sure to head on over to quinzcoins.com I'll be putting the link down in the description below. But with that being said, that's going to pretty much do it for this episode of Coin Shortage Hunting. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to go down below and leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new because I post new videos like this every single week. Always bring you along with the hunts and having a good time despite the coin shortage. And as always, I'm Quinn and this is Quinn's Coin signing out and I will see you in the next one.